Students of OFS, we are here today to talk about the TOK presentation for the examination group year 2015. Now these are just some observations that we've noted that actually should help you formulate a better presentation and meet the expectations of the rubric. So we'd now like to walk you through our basic ideas behind what will go into a good presentation. Okay, every presentation begins with the RLS, the real life situation. It's imperative you come up with a good real life situation. Okay, try to extract, take something that's from current events, something that's actually real, not a hypothetical situation. So the difference would be picking something like the death penalty. Okay, it's a real situation, but it's a generalization. An article about someone who is facing the death penalty is a real life situation. So make sure it is actually a real life situation. That's first and foremost. Now, once you've got that clear real life situation, the next step is the extraction of the KQ, the knowledge question. Now, in previous years, students have been encouraged to quickly dive into that TOK world. So if we look at our board here, we've got the real world represented by a real life situation and underneath we have what we call the TOK world, represented by the dotted line. Now previously it was thought, the faster you got into the TOK world, the better. Okay? Now it seems with the new rubric, the process of extraction is one of the most critical parts of your presentation. You need to show that there's a real relationship between the real life situation and the knowledge question. So how do you do that? You take your time. Rather than just diving in, Use the ladder, take some steps, raise the questions, talk specifically about your real life situation. If it's an article, give the background and the necessary details of what's happened in that article. Then show the questions that the article's raised. What did it make you think about, okay? Does it raise questions on ethics? Does it raise questions about the reliability of the claims that are being made? Clearly show that idea of pulling this into the TOK world. Make sure that by the time we get down here to the extraction of the knowledge question, there's a clear link between the two. If you don't do this convincingly, the highest marking you can receive on your presentation is a four, okay? And that's directly out of the rubric, okay? So please make sure you're giving some real consideration to that first process of extracting into the knowledge question. Now, when we get to the knowledge question, what does it need to look like? Well, it needs to be focused, okay? It needs to be focused. Now, formerly, the requirement was thought to be to decontextualize this, to make it so open-ended that it can apply to all situations. Not necessarily so anymore. Now we want to make sure it's focused enough that it can require a really good detailed development, bringing in areas of knowledge, bringing in specific ways of knowing. So keep that in mind, that while you want to decontextualize, have a, more of an open-ended question that is exploring knowledge in general, don't overdo it. And the key thing is to find the balance, okay? Hopefully in the creation of your presentation, your teachers will be getting around you and help you have a focused knowledge question. One of the other issues with the knowledge question that comes up is try to couch it with TOK terms, okay? TOK terms are very, very important. It'll almost force you into doing a TOK analysis. It'll require you to have words like reliability, certainty, raise problems of knowledge in that question, link it to ways of knowing and areas of knowledge where it's appropriate to do so. All those things will ensure you've got a good KQ, which will allow you to do a reasonable good, reasonably good job on your development. At this juncture, I'd like to turn it over to my esteemed colleague, Mr. John Helner, who's going to walk you through the process of taking the KQ through to development. Mr. Helner. That's going to be hard to beat that one. <laughs> Um, all right, this is pretty much as we've always been with a couple of small alterations. Um, we're now suggesting maybe only two developments in the body of your presentation because we're going to ask you for more depth in your examples and possibly linking back during this phase. So we're, it might be that you only have two presentations you cover them with a deep analysis rather than three or four developments across here. And as we've always said, the developments still maintain this format. They make a claim related to the knowledge question. You then explain that claim in a couple of sentences, if necessary. You then support it or prove it, the claim, with an example, you then offer an alternative view or a counterclaim, probably with an example, 
that will support the counterclaim. But then at that stage, you also want to acknowledge that you've rebutted the counterclaim, that you actually still believe this, but you acknowledge that there's another way of looking at things. Okay, in TOK, we want to see the flexibility of mind that shows your ability to grasp different views and perspectives and alternatives. So you then say, I believe, I prove it, but I know there's another way of looking at this, but I still believe this for whatever reason. And then, of course, at the end, just quickly let the listener know uh, how this links to that. And then we'll talk later about linking it back up there. Okay, same thing with your second development. Same process. What's new for 215? We want you to use more academic examples. Uh, by, and we're using that word, in uh, this is our definition, but we don't want wishy-washy, wet, soft examples like I used to believe in fairies when I was four years old and I imagined them and I went down to the bottom of the garden every day to see if there was a fairy down there and this proves that my imagination controlled my behavior. That's wishy-washy, it's almost silly, it's lackadaisical. We want you to use something personal, but a bit more academic, along the lines of um, uh, something from CAS, an experiment you did in the science lab, one of your IB subjects, something that you found or an experience you had while you did your extended essay. Uh, those are real, all right, rather than something phony. We'd also like you to consider uh, during this presentation, in here, probably in your examples, maybe bringing in another perspective, uh, what another person in another place at another time in another gender from a different academic um, a discipline, from a different area of knowledge might think as opposed to someone else. That different viewpoints of the world and possibly some sort of um, reference to personal and shared knowledge. We've moved away from just you as the knower to maybe acknowledging that you're part of something else, that, that um, shared knowledge. You want to pick that up now, Mr. Cool? Sure. Okay, so if we've come through our development, and you'll notice under the old guidelines we are often saying that we should strive for three developments, okay? On this diagram, we only have two, and I think if you have time, if you're working with a partner and that gives you about 20 minutes to work with, if you can fit in a third quality development, that's fine, but I'm trying to emphasize, I think most of the teachers are in agreement that quality goes a lot further than quantity, okay? A, a third development that's weak and adds very little in terms of linking back to the real life situation probably isn't necessary. So the depth of analysis is certainly much more important. So that's why we're looking at perhaps two strong developments against three. But you only have to decide in your own time with your own planning if you have time to fit in a third well-developed claim or, or, or analysis rather development. Moving into the conclusion now. Okay, the most significant part of the conclusion, and again, looking right at the rubric for the, for the first assessment group in 2015, you must show significant awareness of the outcomes of this analysis in linking back to the real life situation. So that doesn't mean just saying, um, when I'm in a situation, I need to be smarter and know that there are limitations. You know, it's got to be something significant. You really want to probe deep. You want to take on some, make some new kind of statement that because of this, something I did not see before is very evident in approaching that real life situation. Now, the key language that's used in the rubric is that your knowledge question must be developed in context of the real life situation. Historically speaking, we have allowed that the link back to the real life situation comes from the conclusion. So if we want to use this metaphor of above the water and below the water, in the old format, the idea is we dove in and got below the water and we stay below the water throughout this whole development. And then at the conclusion, we go above the water again. We come back to our real life situation as well as one other real life situation. And maybe again, given time, the dynamics of your group, if you can fit in another, a third real life situation, that's appropriate to do so. But again, think about that idea of quality over quantity. 
However, now, with the new syllabus and with the way it's phrased in the, ex in the examination booklet, in the TOK manual, the development and the links back to the real life situation can occur at the end or during the presentation. Okay? There are different feelings on when it's best to do this. Some may feel that they can make a, a very strong conclusion and a strong link back to the real life situation at the end. One other possibility though, that, I, that that's something that might be more advantageous, is the idea of linking back to the real life, real life situation during the development. So if we want to use this metaphor above water, below the water, once you've dove in and taken the plunge into the real life situation, don't hold your breath for the whole presentation until the end, okay? What might happen if you hold your breath to the end, you run out of time, and the link back to real life situation just might not be strong enough, okay? And this must be significant. You really have to show that connection because of this analysis. This affects how I see this real life situation. So another possibility is during your developments, come up for air, okay? So we're gonna use that metaphor. Take a breath, come up here, and at this point, have perhaps a mini conclusion. Consider the implications from just this one development and how that links back to the real life situation. Make that connection there and make it clear and make it significant. That way you're ensuring that during the presentation you have the time to make those connections. Move on to your second development once again. Come up for air. Go back to that real life situation. Okay? Finally, in the conclusion, you want to tie those loose ends together. If you go back to that real life situation again, that's acceptable. And at this point, you need to make sure you make a connection to another real life situation. One more tip on the other real life situation. There's very little gained in the presentation if your second real life situation mirrors the first one. So I go back to my example of the death penalty. I have an article about a person who's facing the death penalty, you know, wrongly put on, on, on death row, and, and how that's been overturned because of new evidence, and you're looking at the reliability. To give another example about another person on death row, it's really not going to add much in terms of the depth of the analysis. Try to find something that's similar, but in a wholly different place. Okay, that's the key idea of why you're making that link. You're showing really thorough understanding now of your development in terms of coming up with your second real life situation or perhaps your third. Okay, so to summarize, come down into that uh, into the into the TOK world, but do it at pace. Make sure. You're, you're, you're putting, keeping that, that, that development in context that so we can see a clear link between real life situation and KQ. Make sure you have a quality KQ. Make sure that it's clearly allowing for TOK analysis to take place. Couch it in the terms if necessary when it's appropriate to do so. Development, I won't go through all of this, but as Mr. Hellner said, make sure we're following this process. Okay, linking back to the real life situation, this must be done. So whether you do it during this development or at the end, significantly show the outcomes and of course, link to other real life situations that are significant. Are there any questions? What's your feeling on personal versus shared, Mr. Cool? I think knowledge. shared knowledge really does try to drive the presentation because most of what we have is shared knowledge. However, there's a place and a time that's appropriate to, to use personal knowledge, okay? So I think we want to try to have a balance. Okay? I think we want to strike a balance between knowledge that, that is generated through the various AOKs but also have that personal knowledge incorporated as well. Would that come in their examples probably? or I would, would that would probably be best placed in their examples, yes. My question is with regards to the extraction and how clear they have to be or how specific do they have to be in terms of identifying and explaining the AOKs, for example, that they're going to explore a part of their real life situation. I think all of that is, is very significant. I think we, the, the clarity is, is, is the essence of earning the marks here, okay? If, if your examiner, hence your teachers who are scoring these, these presentations, cannot see that clear link, then you're not gonna be able to maximize those points. And it's absolutely imperative to make sure you're drawing that line clearly. You cannot make assumptions here. It must be done, must be done you know, uh, explicitly. Can I, can I add something there? You sure can. When I say explicit, when I use that with my classes, I say, at this stage, when you get to this, if you use the word emotion or ethics or evidence in the, in the um, KQ, somewhere in here, in here, you've got to know where evidence is involved in the real life. Where is emotion involved in the real life? Where is ethics? Or oh, whatever terminal keywords you use here, how did you get them out of there? 
right down to saying this is an emotion or whatever. Does that make sense? That makes absolute sense, and I okay. couldn't agree more. Any final questions? Feel good. Very well done. TMK students, arise. Go forth. <laughs> Conquer. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>